Alrighty, good evening everyone. Meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with Southern Indiana Weather. Thanks for logging on here to my latest long range update. It is December the 3rd, 2014. It is late. It is about 10 p.m. here, so it might even be on Thursday before you're watching this. We're sponsored today by Metal Magic in Washington. You can give Chad a call at 698-8555 for all of your paintless dent repair needs. And be sure to tell them that Southern Indiana weather sent you. All right, folks, lots to talk about tonight. Let me start off with the short-term pattern, sort of the rainy weather that we're going for the next couple of days, and then we'll migrate out from there and talk about uh, what to expect really for a good chunk of December. There's a lot of model disagreement right now. We'll talk about why. But let's go ahead and start off with a short term here. Some rain on the way. Here we are into the overnight hours on Thursday on the high resolution NAM future radar. Some light precipitation breaks out across the area. Uh, there's a chance that some of us could be very near freezing tomorrow when some of this uh, breaks out. Expect the potential maybe for just a little bit of sleet or freezing rain, freezing drizzle rather would be a better term uh, mixed in here. I don't expect a huge amount of travel problems here in southern Indiana, uh, but I do mention it because there would be the possibility of it at least. Uh, but beyond that, we'll warm up uh, pretty quickly past the freezing mark tomorrow. And then uh, you can see as we go through the day, a uh, pretty decent chance of some rain coming in the afternoon hours. Uh, that precipitation wave moves out. We dry out a little bit for the evening. Then the overnight hours on Friday comes and we start to see things moving back. Here we are by Friday morning and uh, just a good soaking rain much of the day on Friday coming our way. A heavy rain potential coming our way on Friday night into early Saturday morning here as the cold front finally uh, passes and moves out of the area and we'll clear it out finally uh, Saturday mid-morning maybe into the early afternoon hours and we'll start to dry out for the weekend after that. As far as how much rain can expect the models are in wide variance but a good amount of rain could be on the way folks. I would not be surprised for many locations to pick up a good one to two inches over the coming days off of this. Now beyond this let's sort of talk about what we can expect all right we've got some rain that's coming on our way over the weekend uh, but what about next week well let's take a look at what some of the modeling is saying next week uh, we could return to a little bit of some wintry precipitation kind of weather i don't see this as a big event yet but let me just show you what we got here's what the euro model says and uh, you can see here let me just uh, scroll down here where you can see it here's indiana right here Let's look at the Euro model. Uh, there is those waves of uh, rain moving through us. Uh, here we are up to early overnight hours on Friday night into Saturday morning. That rain then uh, moves out of the area and we start to dry out a little bit. But as we go forward in time, we'll be dry on Sunday. But by the time Monday starts to come, you got this next wave of precipitation that's uh, starting to move down uh, here. And, and you'll be able to see this move down watch this notice that the blue lines are well south of us so anything uh, you know the 534 line is way to the south of us here we're approaching the 526 line anything that falls under this type of regime should be snow showers uh, by this particular point in time and this would be 7 a.m. on Tuesday morning uh, looks like there's a chance for it to start on Monday but the biggest chance would be uh, on Monday night into Tuesday according to the Euro model. Uh, snow shower is a good bet here as far as accumulations are concerned. Uh, it's not a huge uh, it's not a huge uh, snow maker here um, but if we are cold enough and everything could stick I could easily see us uh, you know picking up an inch or two potentially with this as an early estimate. Uh, I don't see this as a mega storm but the potential for some light accumulations are there. That's certainly something that we'll keep an eye on and fine-tune the details and here's why because here's what the uh, you know here's what the euro says for us right now but if you just take a look at the GFS you can see the GFS has a completely different picture not in agreement at all on this. Uh, in my opinion the euro has a little bit of a better handle on the situation uh, the GFS, uh, many, you know, many times we see the Euro sniff these things out far before the GFS ever does. And here's some other things. Uh, the Canadian, you notice the Canadian here that I'm showing you now. Very similar look to the European model as well. It gives me some credence that the, that the Euro and the Canadian are starting to sniff a pattern out. GFS just has not caught on to it yet. The GFS is you know, keeping the precipitation 
far to the north of us and into a little bit more of a warmer sector for the early start of next week. So expect some model madness over the coming days for sure, but uh, definitely the potential for some light uh, wintry weather uh, on the way for Monday and Tuesday. And uh, we will just, uh, we'll have to keep you updated on that, folks, as the time goes by. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, view this as a uh, big winter storm uh, yet. Uh, just some uh, more of a nuisance, a couple of inches or under sort of thing at this point. But for snow lovers, it's a cause for uh, rejoicing. Nonetheless, the potential will exist there. Then after that moves out of the way here by Wednesday, we start to clear it out and we start to have a slow warming trend after that, according to the Euro model. So there's, uh, there's kind of what to expect over the next 10 days or so, folks. Now, according to the Climate Prediction Center, and if you followed me for a while, you notice I, you know, I don't show these outlooks very often because, well, frankly, I, I don't particularly like uh, the way they do them. They're wrong often, the folks at the CPC. I'm not going to overly criticize them, um, but I just have a difference of opinion than they do a lot of times. Here's their latest outlooks, though. You can see sort of above normal for a good chunk of the country, near normal for us over the next six to ten days, and they're eight to fourteen. The almost all of the country gets into an above normal pattern and by the way uh, these things constantly change if I would have showed you these yesterday they had the entire country at an above normal now they've sticking some below normal uh, and finally down here uh, you know the bottom line is uh, I think the folks at the climate prediction center rely just a little too much on the GFS model uh, the GFS is the American model that uh, the National Weather Service does run so it's their own but it is uh, inferior uh, by leaps and bounds compared to the European and Canadian models and uh, it doesn't sniff this wintry pattern out nearly as much it doesn't sniff the cold patterns out before it happens uh, the Euro and the Canadian are usually light years ahead of them and the GFS is struggling to catch up several days later on things so if you base your forecast entirely on the GFS chances are good you're going to be bungling it up quite a bit uh, I tend to think that this is wrong I, I think that we're not going to stay in an above normal pattern for a good chunk of uh, December I do think that we are going to be near normal for at least a little while. Our average high right now is 47. I see us getting back into the 40s and 50s for a little while, with the exception maybe of the start of early next week. Uh, the Euro and the Canadian sniffing out just a little bit of light wintry precipitation uh, could take us down into the 30s. Uh, for uh, two or three, maybe four days there, but we'll rebound up to the 40s after that. Uh, by the way, if you're saying, well, hey, wait a minute, Michael, your your winter forecast was for a brutally cold winter here again with uh, an above normal snowfall. So, you know, how's that working for you? Well, keep in mind, number one, a meteorological winter just started two days ago on the 1st astronomical winter which is what everybody goes by the calendar it doesn't start until the 21st so we're technically not even in winter yet as far as that goes so let's not be too concerned about saying the winter outlook is busted yet it's not we're just now getting started and by the way uh, whenever I make those winter forecasts I look at uh, what we call analog years analog years are those uh, previous year forecasts uh, what I'm looking for is uh, the patterns from previous years to match up with where we're at right now. Uh, you can't always uh, use those as a, as a rock solid guide, but they can give you a hint of sort of what the winter could be ahead based on what we have seen in the past under very similar conditions. And uh, most all of the analogs, by the way, had a warm first half uh, of December, which is what we are sensing in the modeling for the most part right now. Uh, but by the time the second half to late December came along and then into January and February, uh, those analogs go down very cold. And I think that's what we're going to see this year. If you were to go back to my website and look at my winter forecast, uh, I even mentioned in there that don't be surprised if we get uh, uh, sort of a late start to the cold if it's not January before it starts to really kick in. I do think that we have a chance later in December here to really kick things in. And let me show you why. Uh, why I think, especially uh, beyond the 14-day, you know, uh, I could see the 8 to 14 day. This would take you, by the way, till about the 17th of December. I think that's pushing it a little bit. I don't think we're going to be above normal all the way through the 17th. I think from about 14th or 15th onward, just take a look at this. I would say from about, yeah, about uh, this week onward into here, we could start to see some cool down starting to take effect. And just sort of let me show you why. We have uh, got another super typhoon out there, super, super typhoon. Hagaput, I believe, is how he would pronounce that. I'm terrible with names folks so uh, don't uh, don't criticize me too bad here but 
Here's the Philippines right here if you're not familiar with uh, your geography. And again, this is a, a super typhoon uh, winds right now. Uh, predicted to go to all the way up to 170 knots with gusts to 205 knots. Uh, folks, that's uh, that's just uh, that's an equivalent to a Category 5 hurricane. Typhoon and a hurricane are the same exact thing. They just call them typhoons out in the Pacific. So this would be a Category 5 hurricane, basically, that's progged here to pretty much strike the Philippines. Now, I think this may, uh, they you know, they may get lucky here and, and not get it. Right now, uh, the models uh, and, and the way the uh, Joint Typhoon Warning Center uh, keeps issuing their outlooks, uh, the Joint Typhoon Warning Center here is the equivalent to the National Hurricane Center for us, by the way. They hit these uh, Joint Typhoon uh, Warning Center is uh, jointly operated, by the way, uh, by the uh, National Weather Service and the Navy. That is why it's called the Joint uh, Center. Uh, but they keep changing this outlook every day, and the, and the difference is depending on whether you believe uh, which particular model. Some, some want to actually take this typhoon over... Uh, over the Philippines and head it to continue it on a westward track and somewhat to recurve the thing. Well, that's going to have big implications. Let me show you what's going on here. Just take a look at the visual satellite here. Let me zoom it in first. Here is Super Typhoon Hagaput right here. You can see a well-defined uh, eye in this bad boy. This is going to do some damage if uh, it does hit the Philippines. And uh, let me just sort of zoom out, show you sort of what's going on here. This is, uh, there's, your, there's your typhoon right here. Uh, some of the models are wanting to take it sort of in a westward pattern. Some even want to slam it here over into Vietnam. I don't think that's possible. And here's why. You've got a huge ridge of high pressure over here. A low pressure, which, uh, by the way, a typhoon or a hurricane, all it is is a massive low pressure cell. Low pressures will never overpower a high pressure. Bottom line, that's basic meteorology 101. A low pressure uh, going up against a high pressure, not going to happen. The high pressure is going to win every time, uh, especially a strong high pressure. And this one keeps getting stronger. And what's going to happen here is this is going to force that. It's going to halt the brakes and say, uh, no, thank you. There's only so far west that you can go, Sunny Jim. The other thing that uh, we would want to see here, too, is the prevailing wind pattern. Notice what you got right here. Uh, this is actually the jet stream. And so uh, as this starts to take a little bit of a dip here, you've also got sort of the prevailing winds uh, around... Uh, around the uh, the uh, typhoon this is sort of the prevailing winds right now around it so eventually this is going to go west only to a certain point and you know basically uh, this thing is, is eventually if it does go west it's going to get kicked up and start to recurve out this way so some of the models will actually recurve it and starting it out here uh, some take it to the west but eventually this booger is going to recurve it is only a matter of time before it recurves and of course once it recurves and sends it into the jet stream our way then that of course has implications for us we've talked about this many a time uh, over the uh, over the past uh, several months. So let me just show you some of the models. Uh, the NAVGEM, which is the Navy model, wants to sort of slam this into the Philippines and take it over. Uh, the GFS operational model actually wants to sort of recurve it and then start to take it a little bit to the west, but still sort of on a northward track. This would eventually lead to recurving as well. Here is the uh, the uh, GEFS, the Global Ensemble Forecast. This is the GFS ensembles, basically, and, and you can see a pretty much almost all of those individual members are recurving it in some sort of a funky pattern here as well. So, again, sort of the model consensus is for a recurve. Uh, the uh, This is the uh, Canadian version, and uh, you can see some of theirs actually slam it out in towards Vietnam where some recurve. Again, with that high pressure over here and the jet stream over here, it's going to be having a hard time. Let me, here's, let me just show you this. This is the current jet stream pattern. Here's the Philippines right here. Uh, Japan is over here. Let me take off that model fill here so you can see here's Japan over here. And um, put that back on here and we'll mark right here this wind pattern you see right here. This is Hagaput uh, right there. So um, basically what you're going to see is it go this way, but it's only going to be able to go so far because you can see the winds here are just absolutely screaming in the jet stream. So, you know, yeah, yeah, you may be able to get this to go for a little while, but eventually it's going to start uh, running into these stronger winds, and that's essentially going to force it uh, back out to see there's only so far west this thing is going to be able to go. That's my point. That's sort of the uh, bottom line in, along with this. So... That, of course, is going to have some major implications on us because, uh, as we've talked about, once a typhoon starts to recurve past Japan here and it heads back up towards Alaska, it'll become what we call a subolution low. That low gets absorbed by the jet stream, and that sort of jacks the jet stream up. That usually sends a big dip over us uh, over the eastern side of the United States. That brings a pretty sharp cool down. The stronger the typhoon, the sharper the cool down typically. Um, 
So, and we've already seen that. Remember a couple of the big cool down events that we've already seen. Remember the morning that we got down to nine degrees and we were just like, what in the heck? This is November. We should not be in single digits already. That was due to a recurving typhoon. We get another one that's going to come away. Could we end up with that type of brutal weather again? Absolutely, it's on the table. That would not be classified in my books as a warm December like uh, uh, the Climate Prediction Center and some of the others are wanting to make it. So uh, that's something that we're just going to keep an eye on over the coming days. But uh, I don't think there's any way this ends up slamming Vietnam. I think this is going to, there's only so far to the west it's going to go. And it may end up hitting the Philippines. I hope not for their sakes. This is a super typhoon. I don't want to wish that on them. Hopefully it'll just recurve and start to head uh, our way back out of there. But eventually it's going to head our way. And folks, I do believe this is going to lead to pretty big cool down later on in the month. So that's sort of what to expect. I would uh, not put a date on this yet because uh, we really, I can't put a date on when this cool down would start. But I would say any time, you know, basically, um, you know, this is uh, 10 days would, would put it, according to at least these models right here, might put it out into here. But then again, you see 10 days over into here. Let me just sort of, um, yeah, um, I, I would say it within 10 days, probably we're going to see it somewhere over in here would be my guess as this thing is forced to then recurve. Uh, so if 10 days puts it over into here, and this is starting to recurve past Japan our way, the typical typhoon rule says 6 to 10 days uh, once it recurves past Japan, past Japan here, it has a major impact on us. So if we just assume 10 days from now, the recurve is starting. Uh, 10 days from now would put us right to uh, about here on the 13th or so, roughly. Another six to ten days beyond that seven would put it to the 20th. So I would expect anywhere folks from, say, maybe the 18th through Christmas, right around in there, would be when that trough should uh, start to come into play. So that gives you sort of a week. Uh, the days preceding up to Christmas uh, would be whenever I think that big cool down would take place. Could that bring a winter storm with it? Absolutely it could, uh, if, especially if there's some other factors start to take place. But the bottom line is we don't know what's going to happen yet, uh, but that's sort of the pattern for the the next uh, little bit over the month here, folks. Don't believe the warm idea for uh, later on in December. It's yeah, it's going to be reasonably uh, warm here for a few more days, um, but ain't going to last forever. All right, if we take a look at your 10-day forecast, go to southernindianaweather.com. There's what you see. We're into the low 40s again tomorrow with some rain. There's that rain in the low 50s even in there for Saturday. But then next week, early on, we get some light snow into the picture. And I'm going to uh, forecast us into the 40s on Monday uh, with a chance of some rain or snow during the afternoon hours. Changes to snow overnight on Monday. And it's uh, pretty much a cold snow shower on Tuesday. I don't even know. 35 may be a little bit too high here. We'll just have to trend that and see how the models end up handling that. Accumulation, maybe, maybe not, too early to tell, but the potential is certainly there. And then beyond that, you can see uh, still a pretty much below normal pattern. 47 is our average high, so we are still just a little bit below normal. And of course, as you go beyond that, folks, it's going to get even colder the later on we go into the month. Uh, but we'll just have to trend it, and we'll see how that goes. All right. That is it for this uh, long-range update, folks. I babbled on a little bit too long here, but uh, thanks for watching us. If you're in the Orange County area, by the way, be sure to check out Springs Valley Herald and the Paoli News Republican. They did a story on me in their newspaper. You can check it out in the print or go to their website if you're a subscriber and be able to see that as well. Big thanks to Miles Flynn and the great folks there at uh, Orange County Publishing for doing that story on us, folks. All right, that is it for this update, folks. I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite for Southern Indiana Weather. Have a great night, and we'll see you next time.